What's up guys? Today I'm working on the salt spreaders. The winter season's coming and this particular spreader we went to start it and it just wouldn't start. Uh, it's, it, it seemed like it was flooding. We changed the spark plug out. We tried starting it again. Uh, nothing. So I'm going to show you how to... We got no spark coming from it. I put a, a spark tester on it. There's no spark. So I am going to show you how to change the coil on this. This is a Briggs & Stratton 10 horsepower, I believe. 344 cc um, let's get into it here's our engine right here you can see it's actually oh it's actually the 10 and a half horsepower 344 cc all right now i already had started taking out these 10 millimeter bolts you're gonna find two in the front here all right and if you come around back here to your fuel pump let me show you climb up here behind these hoses here there's going to be a spot, I don't know if you can see it, but it went right in there. There was another 10 millimeter. And if you go around to the other back side, I don't know if you guys can see this here, but there's another one right there. And then underneath of your air filter cover here, actually, let me place that back up there so, so you can see it. All right, so the air filter goes here, and you're just pretty much going to turn this. This one, if you can, if it's locked, you can turn this. You can see there's an unlock and a lock position. You want to turn that, and then you just be able to pull this up. All right. Now, the last bolt you got to take out to remove this whole cover, there's a little flat head that goes right there, which I already took out. It's right there. And I got to this point, and I realized that, hey, let me do a video on this. I haven't done a video on these ignition coils on these engines yet so that's where we're at so now you just want to kind of wiggle this panel and I'm mind you I got one hand going here so it's gonna be kind of difficult um, to pull this up with one hand oh, there we go we're gonna do it straight up and back all right, and you can see, we got a stone in here. That's not a stone. What the f You see that? See, this is what happens when these things sit over the winter. Mice get in here. Bees make nests. But look at that. See all this rust around our flywheel here? The coil's all rusted. I bet you if we just clean that up, we'd probably get this to fire right up. All this rust is probably from preventing us from getting our spark. But we're just going to go ahead and we're going to change this coil out. Uh, we're going to take these two bolts off here. We're going to get this cocoon out of here first. All right, got my little wasp nest cleaned out of there. All right, I went ahead. I thought I hit record on the camera, but I guess I didn't. Anyway, these two bolts on your uh, coil here are eight millimeters. So uh, I just used a little ratchet drive to get in there. But eight millimeters, you wanna take those two bolts out. And then you can just pull your coil right off of there. Just like that. And you can see all this rust on here. And that, that's certainly this rust can prevent you from getting the spark that you need. Um, I probably could just wire brush this and put it all back together and it might work but I don't want to be doing this at 2 o'clock in the morning in the winter when this salt spreader goes out so I do have a new coil here that I'm just going to throw on and I will uh, give you that part number right now there's the part number 594626 armature magneto before I go ahead and throw that back on, I'm going to take this little wire brush and I'm just going to clean up some of this rust along the flywheel nice and lightly. Now, important thing to note when you're putting these back on, you can see the writing on there. It says this side out and this side says cylinder side. So your cylinder side's going to go down that way and this side out will be facing up. Also, you can take note of where your... Uh, your wire plugs in on the side here so we want that facing out there to our left but as long as you got the writing on there 
then you're good. So we're gonna set this up here and we're gonna get our first bolt started in. The hole there, that one's in. Now we'll do our second one. And be careful when you're screwing these in. If you feel a little bit of resistance as soon as you start turning, you're probably cross-threading it, take it out. And just make sure that these things are going in. That you get a decent amount of turns out of it with your finger to know that it's going in good. Because you cross-thread this and snap one of these, you got a whole new set of problems. All right, so we're gonna leave them loose. I got them nice and hand snug, but I'm still able to slide this back and forth. And we're gonna need our, uh, our gauge here. And typically what I do is I'll take the smallest one out of here, out of my fielder gauge, and I am going to slide it in between the flywheel and the coil here, just like so. And I'm going to push that up against it, and I'm going to finish snugging this down by hand. Now you should feel a little bit of resistance after you do that, just like that. It shouldn't be stuck in there, you should have a little bit of resistance. All right, I got that one pretty snug by hand. I'm gonna pull that out now, and I'm gonna come over to this side. We're gonna get that one down in there. I'm gonna push the coil up against it. Okay, just like that. And I'm going to tighten this one down by hand. Just make sure you don't move the coil after you have this pushed up against there. All right, and I got a little bit of resistance there, and I'm gonna pull that out just like that. Now what I'm gonna do, probably gonna need two hands to do this. Uh, I'm up on a ladder here. Um, I'm gonna take my ratchet drive, but I am gonna slide this back in as I ratchet that down, because what'll happen is when you're turning that ratchet drive, you might push the coil against the flywheel. You don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure you keep that gap. So we're gonna slide that back in and then we're going to take our, let's see if I can do this with one hand here. We're going to take our ratchet drive here. And then we're going to tighten it up the rest of the way. Like that. Alright, we're good. And do the same thing to this side. I normally do this with two hands. I like to keep a little pressure on there and turn that ratchet at the same time. And it looks like we're uh, looks like we're pretty good there. And if you look, you'll see there's very little gap between the coil and the flywheel now. And what you want to do to make before you start it, just kind of turn this. Make sure that's not rubbing. All right, because what'll happen is if that's rubbing, as soon as you start this, it's gonna grind this and possibly just destroy this whole coil. So you wanna make sure that that's not rubbing anywhere on the flywheel when you turn this by hand. And don't forget your wire here. It's gonna go in to the side of your coil. And of course you wanna plug this back into your spark plug. Before we do that, actually, we're gonna put this little spark plug tester in here. Um, we weren't getting any spark before. Let's see, get one of these little inline testers at Napa or Advanced Auto Parts, something like that. All right, now, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to I'm going to jump this solenoid here and see if we're getting any spark. Now, keep in mind, you have this hood hanging here. Make sure that it's not going to hit the flywheel, and there's nothing up there because this is going to be spinning. So you want to make sure that you're uh, you're not going to start ripping stuff apart when that's spinning around, and there's no tools laying up there that are going to go flying. And also, if you're on the back of a salt spreader, uh, make sure your cover's not laying on this gear here or this chain. So I have it pushed back out of the way. It's not in the way of the chain. It's not. It's not going to hit the flywheel up there. I'll plug this in, and we're going to see if it starts now. I'm going to jump this solenoid here. And. Oh, come on. Oh, there it goes. Now, 
if you jump that and you're still not getting a spark I'm going to show you what to do to find out if it's indeed your, you know, well, it wouldn't be your coil at this point unless chances are you have really bad luck and you bought a bad coil. But that wire that goes to the coil, I'll show you. This wire in the side, if your machine is still not starting after you put the coil in, pull this wire off. I bet you it'll start now. A lot of times these wires go bad. It runs down to the side here, and you probably can't see it, but it connects to a bolt way back here. Alright, and a lot of times these get really frayed right here, or brittle, and they're not making a good contact. Um, this, could, uh, this could be your problem right there. So pull that wire off, and see if the motor starts. And that is how you change the ignition coil on your 10 and a half horsepower Briggs and Stratton 344 cc I believe but yeah you get it anyways guys please hit subscribe below give me a thumbs up I will see you next time